So on Twitter and Instagram, I asked you guys to send me art-related questions, whether it's how to draw or color something, or, you know, getting over your fear of posting stuff online or art communities and stuff like that. So, um, even though I posted this on Twitter, I think I'm going to focus on Instagram questions just because I got 500 there, which is quite a lot. Thank you, Pipes, for the background noise as usual. So I'm going to be looking through the comments I got on Instagram. I actually have my phone in my hand and I'm just going to be picking some as I go. So um, enjoy. Hopefully this video isn't too long. And if it's too long, I'll just make several parts. Here I go. The first question is, how long did it take for you to learn drawing on the tablet? It's really difficult for me and I just want to know I'm not alone. Um, I cannot really remember the exact time it, it took me, but drawing on a tablet is just kind of like an everyday learning experience. Uh, it took me a very long time to get used to it. At first, I, I used it where I would draw on paper first and then scan it, put it on the computer, and then use my tablet to kind of draw over it. And that worked fine, except that I became too dependent on that, and I didn't want to become dependent on that. So I had to force myself to stop drawing on paper and just start drawing on the computer alone. And that took a couple of months. Like, it, it's a very long process, depending on the person... I've seen some comments like, it took me five minutes to get used to the tablets. Like, good for you, but that's a lie. But um, it depends on the person. It can take a very long time. It's very weird because, you know, most, of the, most likely you're not having a tablet with a screen on it like a lot of people think that all tablets are. Um, it's hard to get used to, like, not having to look down at a piece of paper while drawing and looking up and not watching your hand and, like, and like moving a certain way that you couldn't with your pencil and just, I don't know. It, it, it does take a while, but I promise you it's always worth it. And you have to be very, very patient with yourself and know that everybody has to learn and everybody goes through it differently. Um, just continue to practice, hopefully on the daily if you can, but really it does make a huge difference. And I promise you, eventually you will get it. The second question is how long did it take for you to develop your art style and why is that? uh many years and why is that i don't know just because it takes a long time for people to develop their art style i guess uh, i learned from imitating others and i've made a lot of videos about this so really i don't want to talk too much about it but is is it takes a while and it takes a couple years until i figured out what i was comfortable with and um Another question I got, which was, do you think your style will change or will you stick to it? I am definitely 100% changing it for many reasons. One of the main reasons is because a lot of you guys um, don't understand the difference between, you know, um, like imitation and, and um, studying from others. What I mean is, when I tell you guys to replicate other people's styles, it's usually as a challenge kind of thing. I say try to imitate other people's styles uh, for like a picture and then learn from, figure out what you like from their style and add it to your own. But a lot of people, instead of doing that, they think, I like this art style, it's mine now. <laughs> and then I see people using my art style like, like line for line. They color everything the same way I do. They draw everything the same way I do to the point where sometimes I'll see a picture and I'm like, that, that could, people could think that I drew that. I mean, there's still differences because there's still a difference in skill. And even though they draw the same as me, you can tell like the line art is off or, you know, they didn't pay attention to the colors they chose for things and, um, and stuff like that. But it's still to the point where it makes me kind of like, Ugh, you know, maybe I shouldn't be doing tutorials on how I draw a certain thing and how I color a certain thing because people are taking it like the Bible and sticking to that. And it's like, please, that's not what I mean by learning from other people's styles. So I have actually already begun changing my style a little bit. I mean, a little for little, just one step at a time, uh, hoping that if I'm constantly changing it, people won't be able to keep up. And so um, I'm going to change it. I don't know how, but I'm trying new things. And uh, my style is looking a tiny bit different. At least that's what I've been told. Not a lot of people can notice, but there's enough people that notice that make it worth it. And uh, eventually the people who are who 
took my style, my older style will no longer, uh, it'll be different, you know? <laughs> They'll, their style will be my old style and I'll have a new thing. So yeah, um, yeah, I do want to change it. Not only because of that though, but because as an artist, you should always be changing. You should always be learning things. And so staying at the same place for too long isn't always the best thing. And also it sucks. I've had the same art style for God knows how long and I'm bored of it. So I really want to learn something different. And so, yep, I'm hoping to change it and uh, we'll see where I go from there. Next question is, how do you make time for art? I am so busy with school, work, family. I find it difficult to fit art into my daily life, which is depressing. I am assuming you don't follow me on Twitter or I am complaining 24 seven on how much time I don't have for things that I want to do. And that's actually a big reason why I'm not posting a lot often because I'm at work like 95% of my time and the other 5% I'm at home trying to catch up on Breath of the Wild because Zelda just took over my life. I mean, it's been taking over my life for a while and art is a very long process. I haven't drawn like an actual picture. I've been drawing just boring headshots because that's the only thing I have time to do and it's really easy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have the time to do that and I know you don't either. It's people who think drawing is easy. Oh boy, it's hours and hours upon free time or you know, the time that, you know, when you have a job, it doesn't matter. The whole point is what I did earlier was uh, make sacrifices. So the free time that I used to have for myself to just do whatever I want, that would be my art time and my YouTube time. Um, right now, since I have a new game, I don't want to do anything but play the game. So that's kind of, it's hard for me to pick art over that. But you have to, uh, you have to make time or you have to take time away from somebody else. Uh, is it right to do that? I don't know. Probably not. But that's how I had to do it. And uh, it is depressing that I don't have time for that and that you don't have time for that. But um, yeah, either you make time or you just don't have it. What are some important things that are often forgotten slash overlooked when creating a character? I guess the thing that I find most often to be forgotten is to make them realistic by giving them flaws. And I myself, I am very guilty of this because, you know, your characters are your children. They have to be perfect and blah, blah, blah. But um, it's very important to give your characters flaws because there is not a single person in real life who is perfect. Okay, this doesn't exist. To make your characters more realistic, they have to have some kind of flaws. I, I recommend multiple flaws because really, that's pretty important. Another thing that's often over, overlooked or whatever has to do with their design as in also making them realistic in design and not super realistic because I know there's like fantasy worlds and stuff where people make characters but a lot of people put a bunch of accessories and, and certain clothing things on their characters that serve absolutely no purpose and unless your character is a super giant edgelord who likes to wear a thousand belts and <laughs> and two eye patches and and cat ears and and just stuff like that it's like does your character really need that? Like, is it going to benefit them at all to wear a kajillion belts that prevent them from moving <laughs> pretty fast? Um, of course, I'm a pretty big believer in do what you want with your characters. And, you know, if you want to make a character that looks like that, go ahead. Like, nobody can stop you and it's your character, so you should do what you want. But, you know, that's just something to keep in mind if you want characters to be a bit more realistic. If not if they're completely a fantasy thing and you don't care about them being realistic that's totally fine it's your choice it doesn't matter I can't do anything to stop you but yeah that's that's something that I also had trouble with back when I was 13 and now I'm like uh maybe this character doesn't need 20 belts <laughs> maybe this character doesn't need uh these giant platform boots even though he's supposed to be super active and that's just gonna not that's going to hinder him a lot. <laughs> but yeah, uh, those are just two big things that I feel are often forgotten. There's a lot of things and I could go on and on, but I can't afford that. How long does it usually take you to finish one piece of art, size being a portrait or full body picture? Um, well, if you read my YouTube descriptions for speed paints, it tells you right there the length of time it takes me 
Uh, it depends on the picture, of course. Like you said, the size being a big thing for headshot, just about an hour. Or so that's a long time for just a headshot, but I like to take a long time coloring because it's my favorite process. So I'll probably just keep adding and adding some unnecessary things. And that's what ends up taking such a long time for, um, let's see, for like full body stuff, which I hardly ever do. That's a couple hours. That's, um, without like, if I was to take out all the time that I procrastinate and like don't do anything, um, it could take about like two to three hours. Again, mostly, well, it's, I mean, it's a long process. You have to sketch it and you have to line art and color. But even before that, you have to plan out like what pose you want the character to be doing and the facial expression and stuff. And then fixing your mistakes and all that stuff. So it does take quite a long time. I know people who can do, who can draw the pictures that I draw in like 10 minutes and those people are crazy amazing but for me it takes a couple of hours just because i haven't gotten enough practice and i i just end up doing things over a lot you guys have seen my speed paints where i'm constantly like drawing the same mouth for 20 minutes it's just not a good time next question is how did you deal with people bashing on your art or them insulting your style this can be answered in many different ways depending on who you ask um I know there's a lot of people who think that I'm not very good at taking like criticism well. And although I, I do like criticism when I get it, I'm like, oh, it's just, uh, I try to um, not ignore it, but I try not to respond to it just because uh, no matter what I say, it always turns out to not sound very good. Because the majority of the time I joke around and then, but the way I joke makes people think that I'm genuinely upset when I'm just joking. So a lot of Twitter people think, that I'm very serious when I'm joking around and they're like, don't criticize Leslie's art because she'll take it as hate. And I'm like, no, I'm just joking. I'm just, please. But it's hard to read jokes online. But I do get a lot of comments on my art style and my art on YouTube and stuff like that. It does really suck <laughs> a lot. Especially because I already know my own downfalls. So when other people point it out, I'm like, it's 100% true. But it doesn't mean I want to hear it, but I need to hear it anyway so that it motivates me more to improve. But yeah, it, it sucks, but you eventually have to get over it and kind of try to look past it. And I'm not saying to ignore it completely because you usually it will help you and it will motivate you to become better. And so that's really what you want. But if I was to give you some advice is to try not to respond to it because people will never take it okay. And they'll always find something that makes you look worse. So uh, yeah, learn from it, but don't give them too much attention. Next question. Do you ever want a full-time career in art? And how much do you practice every day slash week? Um, I never really wanted my art to be like the thing that I was going to do, you know? I never pictured myself being able to make money from art besides like commissions, which doesn't really make a lot with uh, how I priced them. And... Um, the reason I'm not sure, I guess, is because my whole life I was told uh, art is great, but let that be a hobby because you're not going to make any money. So do something, go to school and do something good and have art as a hobby. So that's pretty much what I was told my entire life. And so I never, and then I did want to be an artist as a kid, but eventually after being told that a hundred times, I was like, yeah, you're right. I will be poor if I'm an artist. I'm going to stick to it as a hobby. And now I don't believe that, but it still kind of affects how I think. And um, so yeah, I never really wanted to do anything in art like as a career. Uh, now I don't know if I want to like, I mean, I, I could just stick to this forever to be honest. Just anything art related to be like on YouTube and to help others. But I don't know if I would ever want to be like a graphic designer or, you know, that's all I know. <laughs> I don't know a lot of art careers. I definitely don't want to be an animator. I just don't have the time and patience for that. Um, and you guys are asking for animation tutorials. Like, can you go ask somebody who does animations? What's That's like if I go up to a doctor and it's like, hey, can you teach me how to fix this car? And it's like, well, maybe they do know how to fix a car. But usually, though, <laughs> maybe that wasn't a good example. But anyways, um, yeah, I just, uh, no, I never really pictured doing art as a career. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to move past what I'm doing now because I'm pretty content with what I'm doing right now. Uh, we'll see though. We'll see if I do anything with art. 
uh, maybe some character designs, but literally every artist that I've ever met said they wanted to do character designs for video games. Like every single artist. And I'm like, wow, not everyone here is going to make it because everybody wants to do the exact same thing. But we'll see. And uh, how much do I practice every day, week? Not enough, really. Just not enough. Uh, I used to be able to draw every day, but now I'm just not at home a lot and... I have this new game that takes up hours of my life and it's just not a good time. I'm lucky to get even those really simple headshots that I've been getting recently. So, yeah, not a lot of practice. Do you have any recommendations on how to draw different poses? Have you seen my art? My characters are in the same pose every dang time. But if, uh, if there's anything that I've learned, it's using references, which for some reason a lot of people think is bad. People are like, I don't want to call myself an artist until I stop using references. Well, surprise! You're never going to stop using references because they're very good to use. And your art will always look better when you use them when rather than when you don't use them. And of course, you don't want to be super dependent on them. And you do want to be able to draw from memory and from what you've learned. But you should still use references every now and again and it doesn't make you any worse of an artist so grow up anyways yes references are a great 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 resource for different poses i like to go on yes style which is what the which is a site i use for clothing and i like to look through the pictures of models and like oh this would be a good pose for like a reference sheet or something like that you know and then i'll like look into that and stuff like that so yeah you can also google things all the time uh, like, you want to draw somebody holding a baseball bat? Just Google, like, guy holding baseball bat. And there you go. You've got some references that you can learn from. And, um, yeah. So those are some very, very good ways on drawing different poses. Again, you don't want to rely on references, like, 100% of the time. But it is definitely a great way to learn. And, um, yeah. So, references, please. Seriously. Use them. They're not bad. Grow up. Next question is, how do you stop same face syndrome? Again, have you seen my art? Every character of mine has the same face besides the eyes. That's the only thing I change in characters because I'm not good. <laughs> okay, um, stop same face syndrome again. Uh, a lot of practice. What I've seen people do, which is really great, um, is drawing people, like actual people that you see, uh, try drawing maybe some celebrities or try drawing like strangers that you see when you're like at the mall or something because everybody has different eye shape and a different nose shape and different mouths blah, 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 and stuff like that and eyebrows so try to draw that and uh, it will feel weird because you're used to drawing in your style but it will help you a lot and another thing I see people do is uh, make pages upon pages of like eyes and noses and stuff so i'll see like somebody draw they have a whole page full of different noses and that's pretty cool so you could try that and uh, same with eyes and mouths and stuff like that and again learn from life people all look different so try to kind of put that into your drawings again like i said this is something i suffer from i know i probably don't have the right to give advice on this and this is advice that i should probably follow myself okay i get it it's great but that's the advice that I have and to people who don't suffer from same face syndrome, go ahead and leave your comments below on some better advice. Whatever. Doesn't matter. I'm just trying to help out. <laughs> My art style is changing every day. How can I stay consistent? It's funny because a lot of people see this as a problem while other people are stuck on an art style and they wish that they could be like you and change it every so often. Um, what makes you think that this is a problem in the first place? I don't know. Uh, to stay consistent, I, maybe it just means that you're not at your art style yet. I know when I was first, like a while, a couple years back when I was studying different art styles and stuff, my art also looked different every day. But it didn't really bother me too much because I knew it was because I was learning so many things and I was trying to put that into my drawings and, and stuff like that and it was just making everything look different all the time. Uh, maybe it just means that you're not ready to have an art style and you're still kind of like taking everything you know and eventually you will settle on something that you like 100% love and you're going to try to replicate that over and over and that's kind of how you stay consistent is by figuring out what you like and try to adding that into your um, 
your art every time. One thing that people don't realize with art is that your art style doesn't necessarily mean how you draw things. Uh, well, uh, that doesn't make sense. Uh, what it's saying is don't only pay attention to how you draw certain things, but pay attention to how you color and how you do line art and stuff like that because that's also a part of an art style. So even though you draw something differently every day, if you're using the same type of colors, like if you use vibrant colors, if you use cooler colors, or if you shade the same way, or you use like line weight the same way, it's still going to be recognizable to you. So don't just pay attention to how you draw things, just pay attention to all the little factors and uh, it'll still be recognizable as your stuff even if the drawing style is a little bit different. How do you stay positive about your art? So that's kind of a hard thing for a lot of people to do because everyone is their own worst critic and you're always going to see your own flaws in your art and it's really hard to look past them. I've done that too. How to stay positive, I guess, is to always look back on your old art and think about your younger self and your younger self looking at your current art and being like, whoa, this is great. I didn't think I would, you know, get this far. And um, it's good to learn, you know, positivity. I mean, positive, but like being able to look at your flaws just means that you know that there's room to grow and that you should keep that in mind. Like maybe I don't like how this looks, but I know if I practice and I, and I work on it, it'll be better. And so that should kind of like persuade you to keep on moving forward and stuff. And uh, yeah, to stay positive, you know. Think about how far you've come. Think about the people who can't even draw the way that you draw right now. <laughs> Which is kind of sad to say, but you know, you should be proud of what you have and what you can do. Even though you feel like it's not the greatest. Just try not to be so hard on yourself. It's, it's really easy to do that. You will, you know, you will most likely not be super proud of your work. <laughs> And even the few times that you are, there's going to be a time, like a couple days later, you're going to look at it and you're going to be like, why was I proud of this? And I get it. And everybody does it. And just know you're never alone when feeling like that. But seriously, just think about how much, how far you've come, how much farther you're going to get. <laughs> and think about the great things that you can do because of this. Because the great things that you're capable of. Because you can pretty much draw anything. No matter how bad it turns out, you can still draw anything. Want to draw you riding a dragon? Even though you can't draw dragons, you can still attempt it. And it'll be better than what other people can do, right? So keep that in mind. <laughs> Alright, that's all I'm going to answer for right now. I have like a kajillion more questions to get to. But I don't want these videos to be too long. So um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this was a little bit helpful. And uh... Hopefully, if you know, if you didn't find this helpful, maybe the next video will be helpful. Who knows? But thank you again. Uh, thanks for the support. Have a good week. Be good outlets. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.